It's the Word of the Day podcast, coming to you pre-recorded, as always, from the RAV4 Studios. I'm Jamie Silva, and thank you so much for tuning in. We've got a couple words on the docket today, so let's kick it off with the first. It's a verb, chide. I would say that this means to mildly reprimand or correct someone, with an eye towards helping them do better next time. You're telling this person being reprimanded or corrected that they did something wrong, but maybe they had no way of knowing or... They're still a nice person anyway, so don't worry too much about it. So, on the one hand, you might lose your temper and yell at your dog for chewing up your shoes because they've been carefully trained not to, and obedience school isn't cheap, you know. But, conversely, you would probably only chide a puppy because they had no idea they weren't supposed to do that. And those shoes really do look just like little chew toys, don't they? And Sir barks a lot is so cute anyway. The real lesson here is actually that he needs more toys. Now, in terms of the online definition, the internet has mixed opinions on this, showing scold or rebuke in one case, and, quote, to loudly admonish in blame, to reproach angrily in another. So I think this is wrong, and it's way too harsh, but it's echoed in enough places that I think I'll have to accept it as one possible meaning. But there are already plenty of words that mean this, like scold or upbraid, There are not so many words, however, that combine the you-did-something-wrong element with the we-love-you-anyway element, as my sense of chide does. So I would say that if you're going to use chide, I would use it in this way, the more unique way, and the, the nicer way. I think I've basically covered the usage already, but I would add that chiding is most often done by parents to their children, because that's when you very clearly have that balance of, like, Lots of correction and lots of learning, but also with the understanding that the kids are doing their best. And, you know, when I was your age, I also liked to throw my oatmeal at the wall. So just as long as you know that we don't do that here, and next time maybe just say you don't want any more, uh, then we can forget this ever happened. Later on, when people grow up, I think there's less room for this kind of middle ground where chide resides. At that point, you know, when folks are older and they're confronted with chidable behavior, they're way more likely to either not say anything at all because that would be impolite and or awkward, or when they run out of patience to lash out in a very hostile sort of way. This shows that chiding is pretty rare among peers because it's hard to do in an uncondescending fashion. But enough amateur sociology, let's see what this word looks like in ordinary conversation via the examples. In the first example, we'll contrast a standard scolding with a gentler chiding. And you'll notice that while the fundamental intent is basically the same in both cases, i.e. to let someone know that they messed up, the difference is in the phrasing and the delivery. So, example number one. You idiot, you got tons of yolk in the egg whites, so now they won't be nearly as stiff when we whip them. These pancakes are absolutely ruined. Versus this. Oh, wow, look, it seems there's a touch of egg yolk in the whites right there. Uh, Those eggshells can be pretty hard to work with sometimes, but next time around, try extra hard to to keep that white out of the yolk. Uh, Here, here's another egg. Go for it. Example number two. The usher at the hockey game chided Martin and his friends for trying to return to their seats before a stoppage in play, so they waited until he was busy chiding someone else for banging on the glass and then snuck past. Okay, the second word today is the adjective churlish. Churlish is a little antiquated, and it seems like it's of Shakespearean origin. I would say that it means ungrateful, petty, and classless. Churlish types are unpleasant in their manners, and they're self-serving in their actions. And really, it's a pretty broad term, and it can encompass a range of poor behaviors, similar to how it's difficult to pinpoint precisely what it means to be a jerk which, incidentally, is a pretty good approximation of churlish, or more accurately, churl, the noun form of churlish. The online definition is, quote, rude in a mean-spirited and surly way, end quote. Synonyms include ungracious, discourteous, ill-bred, unmannerly, and uncivil. Well, I think the synonyms are more on the mark than the definition itself, which is a little narrow. Yes, rudeness might be churlish, But churlishness is a lot more than being rude. 
And the references to being ill-bred or uncivil are revealing, I think. The churlish among us are likely to be so in glaringly obvious ways. Probably they don't know enough about proper behavior to even be subtle in their churlishness. The etymology here centers on the noun form, churl, which in Old English meant peasant, a member of the probably agricultural lower class. Interestingly, churl did not originally have a negative connotation, as of course churlish does today, and has for a long time. You could, if you wanted, refer to, you know, a bunch of churls out there working hard in the fields, and you wouldn't be casting any aspersions about their character or manners. Equivalent words in related languages had this same perfectly benign meaning. So consider the Dutch word kerel, uh, K-E-R-E-L, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, uh, and that means a non-slave person of low birth. Also, there's the German word kerl, K-E-R-L, meaning man or husband. And then the Old Norse word karl, spelled just like uh, karl with a K, meaning either man or old man. It was only later that some people, presumably noblemen, began using churl in a disparaging way to refer to the common people who were unacquainted with the lofty manners and highly developed moral sensibilities of the upper crust. This, by the way, also happened to the word villain, which we know today as an evil person who exists purely to thwart the happiness of our hero. This originally was just a French word meaning, again, peasant, farmer, or commoner, itself derived from the Latin villa, meaning a country house or, uh, more importantly, a farm. Like, if you wanted some help with the harvest, you might go visit a neighboring villain on their farm and say to them, Hello, fellow villain, I could use some help with my elaborate plot. And of course, by plot, you would mean a plot of land, the one with your crops on it, that needs harvesting. All of this would be totally harmless and above board. But as we know, the meaning changed, as meanings so often do. And one can only presume that in the earliest uh, dramas or novels written by members of the landed gentry, uh, the villains were all literal villains who sat around on their farms scheming and just being generally churlish. It is now time for the examples. Example number one. Did you hear how churlish Dave was today? He just brought a small tub of salsa to our party, and then he ate like two-thirds of the home-smoked salmon spread, and then he complained that it wasn't even very good. Example number two. Charisse professed herself shocked to discover that someone had knocked her bumper in the parking lot but failed to wait for her or leave a note. There's a lot of churlish folks out there, she observed ruefully. Example number three comes from our good friend Bill Shakespeare, who, in the play As You Like It, happens to use both of today's words in the same sentence, back-to-back, in fact. And I swear, I did not know this when I was initially putting this show together, so this came as a welcome surprise. In the relevant scene, there is some duke who's been exiled to a forest, and he's trying to make the best of it by noting that, hey, he's always wanted to live in a forest, and he was actually planning on exiling himself anyway, so... Everything is just peachy. In expressing his supreme contentment, the Duke says this, quote, Are not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? Here, feel we not the penalty of Adam, the season's difference? And as the icy fang and churlish chiding of the winter's wind, which when it bites and blows upon my body, even till I shrink with cold, I smile and say, This is no flattery. These are counselors that feelingly persuade me what I am. End quote. Uh, so, best I can tell, in case you had a difficult time following that, this fellow is really getting in touch with nature, and he appreciates how even as the, the wind and the elements make him suffer, at least they're honest about it in some metaphorical sort of way. Also, putting churlish next to chiding should remind us one more time that it is one thing to chide a child and quite another to chide a peer. If you attempt the latter, uh, you may appear petty, passive-aggressive, and ill-bred, in short, churlish. Well, folks, that is it for today's show. We do hope you enjoyed it. And because I don't want to be churlish, I won't chide you for not getting around to reviewing the show on iTunes just yet. I mean, goodness knows we're all very busy people. Uh, so instead, I will just thank you for listening once again and hope you'll do so again soon. I'm Jamie Silva, and this has been the Word of the Day podcast. <laughs>